Hello viewers, yes, this is Ranjana ma'am and you are waiting for this video of mine. Many of you were asking me ma'am when is the second part coming up. So this the thumbnail says it all but it is my duty. It is the second part of Julius Caesar's act 3 scene 1. Julius Caesar has already been assassinated and now Mark Antony comes to the forefront. He comes to question Brutus. He wants to know the reason why Caesar is killed. So we will resume from where we had stopped in part 1. But before I start you know what is coming. If you have not subscribed to my channel please do and do not forget this. So let us start. Re enter Antony. Brutus but here comes Antony. Welcome Mark Antony. So Brutus welcomes Mark Antony. He feels that if we get Mark Antony in our group it would be easier to convince the people that Julius Caesar was harmful for Rome. People will think if his own friends have joined hands that means Julius Caesar had, re had really intended to make us his slaves. So Antony the moment he comes and he sees the body of Caesar lying to the dust when he had left Caesar was there all powerful asking the people what problems they had and now when he enters he sees Caesar lying on the dust at the base of Pompey's statue. So he says oh mighty Caesar dost thy lie so low are all thy conquests, glories, triumphs, spoils shrunk to this little measure fare thee well. So it is his shocked outburst when he sees the body of Caesar he could not when he, when he saw the body of Caesar he could not control himself. So he says oh most powerful Caesar so why I, do you lie so low so he is lying on the dust unbelievable who would have thought half an hour la early, earlier he was on the top of his glory and within half an hour or within one hour he is lying on the ground. So all the victories and glories which you have achieved in your lifetime have they only come to this span of land that means that amount of land which his body acquires means his body is lying on the dust. So have all the lands which you have gathered which you have won which you have conquered have they come just to this little measure only that measure which your body occupies on the ground. So Julius Caesar had conquered many lands but all your glories and conquests have they come to this, this, this little measure. So have they been contracted only to this part this pan of earth on which you are lying. Fare thee well then he bids goodbye to Julius Caesar. I know not gentlemen what you intend, who else must be lead blood or who else is rank. So then he tells the conspirators Brutus and the rest that I do not know what is your intention, what do you intend to do in your list of, in your list of the, uh, the ones whom you want to murder, whom you want to assassinate, who is in your list, who comes next in your list. You all have assassinated Caesar. I do not know who comes next in the list. If it is I, who else is rank? So who else is to be murdered? If I myself there is no R so fit as Caesar's death are nor no instrument of half that worth as those your swords made rich with the most noble blood of all this world. So he says if you have me in your mind as the next to be murdered I have no I have no regrets why because this I consider see all of us will have to die but if I am murdered now I will consider this an honor why because this is the death hour of Caesar within this our Caesar had been murdered. So if you all murder me I would consider it an honor. And if you all murder me with the same weapon with which you have murdered Caesar, this will be no less honor to me. So he says, 
that it would be the best moment for me to die if you want to kill me go ahead this will be i will consider it the best moment for my death and also the best instrument to kill me why because it is stained with the blood of julius caesar yes remember they had stained their swords with the blood smeared their swords with the blood of julius caesar and they had held it aloft and they had come to the marketplace so mark antony or they hadn't done it but they were trying to do it when mark antony came so he says this is the most fittest weapon to get killed with i do beseech ye if you bear me hard now whilst your purple hands do reek and smoke fulfill your pleasure so he says i request you that if you have ill feelings towards me if you have any uh, bad feelings if you have any inimical feelings towards me carry out your plans while your purple hands why purple hands the hands smeared with the blood of caesar so they are the purple hands while they reek and smoke so your hands are still blood stain and hot with smoke means hot with the blood that means the murder has not been committed long ago so your hands are still hot with the blood of caesar fulfill your pleasure carry out your plans carry out your plans of murdering me if you want to murder me live a thousand years i shall not find myself so apt to die even if i had to live a thousand years instead of dying now if i had to live a thousand more years i would consider this to be the most honorable time to die no place will please me so no mean of death as here by caesar and by you cut off the choice and master spirits of the age so i wouldn't find a more appropriate time why because this is the death hour of caesar i wouldn't find a better place to die why because lying beside caesar would be an honor and not only that to be killed by the hands of those people who are supposed to be the most uh, who are supposed to be the most powerful the greatest hands of rome who kill mighty caesar their hands to kill me i wouldn't find any better occasion to die i wouldn't find a better place to die and better murderers at whose hands to be slain brutus o antony beg not your death of us though now we must appear bloody and cruel as by our hands and this the this our present act you see we do you see we do yet see but you but our hands and this the bleeding business they have done our hearts you see not they are pitiful and pity to the general wrong of rome as fire drives out fire so pity pity had done this deed on caesar for your part to you our swords have leaden points mark antony our arms and strength of malice and our hearts of brothers temper do receive you in with all kind love good thoughts and reverence so brutus is emotional and when he sees antony talking in this manner so he says antony please don't expect please don't ask y'all ask us to kill you why because we may appear very bloody why because our hands are blood stained hmm. and the bloody deed the killing of caesar makes us appear cruel but you don't see the intentions why we did this bloody deed our hands are bloody but our hearts they are filled with pity pity for whom pity for the common people of rome and that is why we have killed caesar the wrong done to the common people has prompted us to kill caesar in the same way as a bigger fire swallows up a small fire so fire drives out fire means when there is a big fire and here a small fire is burning the big fire comes and swallows up the small fire so drives away the small fire in the same way pity for the common people of rome has swallowed us swallowed up the pity for caesar we have pity for caesar we are not happy at the killing of caesar but pity for the wrongs done to the common people of rome have swallowed up that pity for caesar 
and that is why we committed his we carried out the bloody deed but regarding you our swords they are not sharp to kill you they have leaden points they are blunt that means we have no intention of killing you our arms in strength of malice that means our arms with which we have killed caesar we embrace you but we love you and our hearts of brothers temper within our hearts we have the love for you our arms might seem malicious why because with our hands we have murdered caesar but our hearts are filled with love for you we feel you we feel fraternal love for you brothers temper do receive you in with all kind love good thoughts and reverence so we have no intention of killing you rather we want to receive you how with all kindness love and respect taking you in as our friend now cassius is the business like person brutus is emotional cassius is not so cassius feels only these words are not enough we have to tempt him to join us so what does he say your voice shall be as strong as any man's in the disposing of new dignities so he tells mark antony Hmm. you will also so that means though you are not a part of the conspiracy but you will also have your full say hmm. when the when we distribute the new offices when new responsibilities are distributed because after the death of caesar everything will be done again afresh and when we distribute the responsibilities to different people you will have a full say your voice will be equally important as our voice why because he desperately wants to win in mark antony because he knows that mark antony is very also no less popular in rome and he is a brave person that is one why, reason why they want to have mark antony in their group he is a brave soldier he is a skilled soldier only be patient till we have appeased the multitude beside themselves with fear and then we will deliver you the cause the, why i that did love caesar when i struck him have thus proceeded so he tells brutus tells mark antony that please mark antony be patient while we have pacified the crowd the crowd are beyond themselves with fear at the bloody deed that has been committed they are so horrified so let me pacify them and after having pacified i will give you sufficient reasons as to why i who loved caesar very much i love caesar dearly so i will give you reasons why in spite of loving caesar so much i did this deed on him i murdered i was one of the persons to have done the deed i doubt not of your wisdom who says this mark antony so i don't doubt your wisdom let each man render me his bloody hand this bloody is ironical as if he is telling their blood stained hands but they have done the bloody deed that means they have carried out the murder of caesar so he is telling let me uh, put forward your bloody hand i want to shake hands whose hand does he want to shake first first marcus brutus will i shake with you so i'll shake hands with you first next kes kesius do i take your hand kes kesius i take your hand after brutus now this is brutus yours now metal is symbol yours sina and my valiant casca yours do last not least in love yours good trebenius so he calls out each of the conspirators conspirators and shakes hands with them gentlemen all you all are gentlemen all of you gentlemen alas what shall i say so i don't know what to say my credit now stands on such slippery ground that one of two bad ways you must conceit me either a coward or a flatterer so he says i don't know what to say hmm. at present my reputation is in danger i am standing on a slippery ground why because 
if I say that whatever I say it will be you will consider me either a flatterer or a coward that means if I say that yes I am happy that you all have murdered Caesar huh, that means either people will say I am saying this because I am afraid that the conspiracy you all will kill me and to save myself from being killed I am saying all this. So, that means I am a coward and if I say that no I am sincerely supporting you all, you all have done the right thing that means I am a flatterer because when Caesar was alive I was always supporting him that means I was a flatterer whatever I told Caesar I did not really mean it. I said all these things only to flatter Caesar. Caesar is brave and Caesar is this and Caesar is that. So, that will be con that will make me appear a flatterer. So, my reputation is standing on slippery ground. So, you will either consider me a flatterer or a coward. That I did love thee Caesar, oh it is true. So, that means if I said I love Caesar and that means I am a, either a flat flatterer I am not true in whatever I said, I just said it but I did not, I do not love Caesar and if I said that I sincerely love Caesar then why have I joined you all, that means I am a coward to save my life I have joined you all. That I love thee Caesar, it is true, oh Caesar it is a fact, it is the authentic, it is authentic that I loved you. If then thy spirit look upon us now, shall it not grieve thee dearer than thy death to see thy Antony making his peace, shaking the bloody fingers of thy foes, most noble in the presence of thy course. So, he says that if Caesar, your spirit is looking from up towards us now, so would not it feel sad that standing at the place where your dead body lies, your Antony is making peace with your murderers, shaking hands with your enemies who have killed you and that also in the presence of your dead body. So, would not it make you sad, Caesar would not, if your spirit is watching us from the top, would not it feel sad that your very Antony is shaking hands with your enemies and that also in front of your dead body. Had I as many eyes as thou hast wounds, weeping as fast as they stream forth thy blood, it would become me better than to close in terms of friendship with thine enemies. Pardon me Julius. So, he says Caesar's body had a number of wounds. Later, I think it is Octavius who says that he had 33 wounds on his body, 33 stab wounds from which blood was coming out. So, Antony says, if I had that many eyes, as many wounds you have in your body and in the way that blood is coming out from the wounds, if my eyes had wept tears of sorrow, 33 eyes, if I had and all of them had shed tears at your death, it would have suited me better. So, please Julius Caesar, please forgive me for shaking hands with your enemies. Actually, he has a plan in mind. He is not a coward, neither a flatterer. He is a very clever person. He wants to know the motive and he wants to act accordingly and that is what you will find in Act 3, Scene 2. How he brainwashes the public and makes them against the conspirators. Here was thy bade, brave heart, here didst thou fall, and here thy hunter stand, signed in thy spoiled and crimsoned in thy lid. O world, thou wast the forest to this heart, and this indeed, O world, the heart of thee. How like a deer strucken by many princes dost thou lie. So, he says, you are here was thou braid, bade brave heart. Hmm. So, he says you, here you were hunted down. So, how was he hunted like a deer? Caesar was defenseless, 
like a timid deer when he is surrounded by hunters and killed in the same way caesar was killed surrounded by his enemies all of them they had daggers in their hand and caesar was defenseless he was shocked and he just stood and faced the attack still brutus attack so he says here was thou bade brave heart so here you were attacked brave deer here didst thou fall you fell here and here thy hunters stand and here your hunters they surrounded you after you were dead signed in thy spoil so your hunters they were signed that means the blood on their hands and their weapons signed in thy spoil and crimsoned in thy lead so they were colored with your life blood your hunters o world then he laments he calls upon the world o world thou was the forest to this heart so here h a r t heart means deer he is talking of deer and next comes the line h e uh, word h e a r t that means the most vital organ of our body so he says o world you you were the forest to this deer that is h a r t and this man that means caesar he was the most precious or the valuable thing heart and he was your heart he was the heart of the world heart is the most valuable organ why because the moment the heart starts uh, stops beating we die so the most valuable part of our body is our heart so caesar was like a heart h e a r t heart to the world and how like a deer struck in by many princes dost thou here lie so you lie here like a, de- a deer who has been attacked by many princes and killed hunted by many princes and killed caesar mark antony so caesar calls on mark antony uh, cassius calls mark antony antony pardon me cassius cassius the enemies of caesar shall say this then in a friend it is called modesty so he begs forgiveness from cassius and says even whatever i have said even the enemies of caesar will say this that he was the heart of the world he was a brave person he was the heart of the world so if i have said this this is just modesty a poor statement that means i should have said much more as a friend even an enemy of caesar will say this whatever i have said even an enemy of caesar will say this about him so as a friend what i have said is an understatement i blame you not for praising caesar so but what compact mean you to have with us always the businessman always the schemer so he says no i don't blame you because you are praising caesar but i just want to know that what do you expect from us so what agreement do you want to have with us will you be pricked in number of your friends or shall we on and not depend you so he says that do you want to be included in our friend list or do you want that we should proceed without you therefore i took your hands but it was indeed swayed from the point by looking down on caesar friends i am with all and love you all upon this hope that you shall give me reasons why and where in caesar was dangerous so he said that i took your hands because i want to be included in your friend list but looking at caesar i was distracted but i wish to be your friend and i love you all and the condition is that you shall give me reasons and explain to me how caesar was dangerous to rome brutus or else were this a savage spectacle our reasons are so full of good regard that were you antonio the son of caesar you should be satisfied so brutus says that if we cannot convince you about the action which we have carried out then it would seem to be a very uh, cruel murder a brutal murder we have reasons for the murder because if we did not have reasons it would appear to be something very cruel our reasons are so 
so complete, so perfect that if you were Caesar's son, even you would have been satisfied. That means we have enough satisfactory reasons to convince you that Caesar was dangerous for Rome. Even if you were, you are Caesar's friend, but had you been his own son also, you would have said, yes, you all have done the right thing in killing my father. That is all I seek and I am more, moreover suited that I may produce his body to the marketplace and in the pulpit as becomes a friend speak in the order of his funeral. Now he puts a request. So he says, I do not expect anything more from you. I just want you to give me sufficient reasons. But one more request that I should as a friend be allowed to take his body to the marketplace and in the public platform, I want to speak. Hmm, I want to speak in his funeral ceremony, which is customary of friends. Brutus immediately agrees, you shall mark Antony. Cassius, always the cautious one, he feels that no, we should not allow Mark Antony to speak, what a, he is a clever orator and he might speak something against us. So, what does he say? Brutus, a word with you, Brutus, I want to talk to you and then he pulls Brutus aside. You know not what you do, do not consent that Antony speak in his funeral. Know you? How much the people may be moved by that which he will utter. So, Cassius does not want that Antony should be given the permission to speak. So, he says that do not give him the permission to speak in Caesar's funeral. So, do you know how much they might be moved by what Antony says at the funeral? Brutus is overconfident, he feels and he is a patriot. So, he feels whatever reasons I give after that, let anyone speak, public will not be convinced. He has too much of confidence on himself. So, he says to Cassius, by your pardon, he tells Mark Antony, by your pardon, please excuse me and then he tells Cassius, I will myself into the pulpit first and show the reason of our Caesar's death. What Antony shall speak? I will protest he speaks by leave and by permission and that we are contended Caesar shall have all true rites and lawful ceremonies. It shall advantage more than do us wrong. So, Brutus has his reasons. So, Brutus he says that you are making a mole of a mountain hill out of a mole. That means you are exaggerating things. First, I will give the speech to the public and then I will give them some good reasons to convince them regarding the murder of Caesar. And after that, I will also say that we are giving an Antony the permission to speak. So, we, if we give all the true rights to Caesar's body, give Antony the permission to speak hmm. and all the lawful ceremonies to be conducted after the death of uh, to uh, after the funeral or at the funeral all that is customary we will allow all those things to happen. So, in that case instead of doing us harm it will do good they will think that yes we have no grudge against Caesar we have killed him only because he is harmful for Rome we have no enmity with Caesar the public will be convinced. So, he wants to convince the people that we are not Caesar's enemies, but we are friends of the Roman people. This is Brutus's intention. So, that is why we are giving Mark Antony also the freedom to speak. So, instead of doing us wrong, it will benefit us. This is Brutus's logic, but Cassius is always the clever person. I know not what may fall, I like it not. So, he completely, he openly voices his disagreement and this is a great fault of Brutus not listening to Cassius because Cassius is far sighted and all the things which he had told Brutus not to do and Brutus had done it, they only proved to be the reason for their defeat in the, in the battle later. Mark Antony here. 
take you see so caesar ignores cassius and he gives mark antony the permission to take the body of caesar you shall not these are the conditions keep it in your mind you shall not in your funeral speech blame us but speak all good of caesar you can devise of caesar and say you do it by our permission else you shall have you else shall you not have any hand at all about his funeral so these are the conditions you will speak but you will not speak against us you can speak all the merits of caesar that you want but don't say anything against us and also acknowledge that we gave you the permission to speak otherwise we won't allow you any hand that means no one will help you to carry the body of caesar to the market place none of you will help none of us will help you hmm. so you will not get any one hmm, to carry the body to caesar's uh, to the market place so no connections with any of us if you speak against us and you shall speak in the same pulpit where to i am going after my speech is ended so after i have concluded my speech you will speak in that same platform so he feels that after i have spoken if antony speaks in that same pulpit it will not have any effect on the people he is so confident of his speech he feels so confident that once i give people the reason why we kill caesar whatever mark antony says it won't impact the public be it so i do desire no more antony is a shrewd person he knows to play the game according to the opponents cassius and antony they are both very wise but antony is more wise he is wiser be it so i do desire no more brutus prepare the body then and follow us so he tells mark antony then get the body ready for the funeral and uh, come uh, come after us so they leave only mark antony is in stage now we see the real antony and his plans why he has joined hands we will see it he has joined hands at this moment or shaken hands with brutus why because he wants to take, get permission to take caesar's body to the market place and also wants the permission to speak so now just see the real antony the friend of caesar oh pardon me thou bleeding piece of earth that i am meek and gentle with these butchers so this is his opinion of the conspirators he calls them butchers so he asks forgiveness Caesar please forgive me that i am instead of being fierce with them i am being gentle with these butchers that means cruel people thou art the ruins of the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times so he looks down on caesar the ruins why because caesar is not alive anymore caesar is dead so it is the ruin of his body of his the ru- ruin of caesar is his dead body so thou art the ruins of the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times so that ever lived in the ages so that means you are one of the greatest men of the world wo to the hand that shed this costly blood the hand that is responsible for shedding the blood of caesar may that hand be cursed so all those hands of the conspirators may they be cursed over thy wounds now do i do prophecy so he is making a prophecy on the wounds of caesar which like dumb mouths do ope their ruby lips to beg the voice and utterance of my tongue so what is he prophesying he is prophesying so the wounds are like open mouths no voice is coming from them the wounds can't speak so they are as if begging mark antony antony speak on our behalf the wounds of caesar they are crying out that i should speak on behalf of them ruby lips red lips why because from the wounds blood is pouring out so the wounds of caesar they are it they are open wounds 
from them blood is coming out so they are as if begging me to speak on behalf of them what what does what do the wounds of caesar want antony to say a curse shall light upon the limbs of men domestic fury and fierce civil strife shall cumber and all and the parts of italy so the whole italy will be engulfed in a civil war bloodshed mass killings destruction will fill all parts of italy blood and destruction will be so in use and dreadful objects so so familiar that mother shall but smile when they behold their infant squatted quartered with the hands of war so he says that these bloodshed killings and destruction will become so common hmm. that people won't this will become as if a regular feature in the lives of people that mothers won't be shocked when their children are killed in the war rather they would smile oh it happens that means they will get so accustomed to these horrible deeds all pity choked with custom of fell deeds so all the pity within the hearts of men they will all disappear on account of the wicked deeds done every day so there won't be any pity left in the hearts of men and caesar's spirit ranging for revenge with eight by his side come hot from hell shall in these confines with the monarch's voice cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war that this foul deed shall smell above the earth with carrion men groaning for burial so he says that the ghost of caesar caesar spirit that means the ghost of caesar will be roaming all around italy thirsty for revenge and who will be accompanying caesar eight eight is a negative goddess she is the goddess for revenge and she will be coming from hell hmm. and caesar like that of a king in the voice of a king he will cry out havoc that means let havoc be spread all over and let slip the dogs of war so all the horrible th- things will take place in rome like famines and fire and all that that this foul deed that means the wicked deed of killing caesar will smell above the earth so how much you try to burn the body or bury it this wicked deed will keep on smelling will keep on and the earth will be filled with cries of men who will be crying out for death crying out for burial that means foul deed shall smell above the earth with carrion men groaning for burial so groaning for burial means they, so many people will be dead that they there won't be anyone to bury these people so they will be groaning to be buried enter octavius's servant octavius is C- julius caesar's nephew so julius caesar had called him but before octavius could meet julius caesar he was assassinated so his servant comes to announce the arrival of octavius and then he notices the body of caesar you serve octavius caesar do you not so mark antony recognizes him you are octavius's servant aren't you I do Mark Antony. Antony Caesar did write for him to come to Rome. Yes, Caesar had written Octavi to Octavius to come to Rome. Servant, he did receive his letters and is coming and bid me to say to you by word of mouth. Up till now he has not seen the body of Caesar. So he tells Mark Antony that yes, Octavius had received Caesar's letter and he has sent me to announce his arrival and then he sees the body of Caesar. Oh Caesar he is shocked. Caesar had called my master and now he is lying on the ground. And he's thy heart is big get thee apart and weep. Passion I see is catching for my eyes. Seeing the beads of sorrow stand in thine began to water. is thy master coming so when he sees 
Octavius's servant crying on seeing the dead body of Caesar. So he says, you are full of sadness. So don't cry in front of me, go far away and cry. Why? Because Mark Antony cannot become weak and cry. He has to take revenge for the murder of his friend Julius Caesar. So he says, if you want to cry, go a little away from me and then cry because tears are very infectious. So your sadness, the tears in your eyes are infecting me and even my eyes are getting filled with tears. And then he asks, is your master coming? He lies tonight within seven leagues of Rome. So he is close to Rome, seven leagues at a distance of seven leagues. So one league is if I am not mistaken three miles, so seven leagues should be 21 miles. So he is quite close to Rome. Antony, post back with speed and tell him what had chanced. So hurry up, go back quickly and tell him what had happened here. Go and inform him immediately, don't let him come to Rome immediately. Hurry up and go and tell him what has happened. Here is a mourning Rome, dangerous Rome. So this Rome is a dangerous Rome, Rome is in mourning for Caesar. No Rome of safety for Octavius yet. So Rome is not a safe place for Octavius at this moment. And then hie hence and tell him so. Go immediately and tell him that at this moment Rome is not safe for him. And then suddenly a second idea comes to his mind. Yet stay a while. Then he says no don't go immediately wait a little. Thou shalt not back till I have borne this course into the marketplace. You will not return until I have carried the body of Caesar to the marketplace. So he needs the help of someone who is a friend of Caesar, Octavius' servant. He wants the help of Octavius' servant to carry the corpse of Rome, carry the corpse of Caesar to the marketplace. There shall I try in my oration. How people take the cruel issue of these bloody men. According to the which thou shalt discourse to young Octavius of the state of things. Lend me your hand. So Mark Antony tells that you will not go back until I have carried the corpse of Caesar to the marketplace. In the marketplace I will give an oration and then try and see how it affects the people and how the people are convinced by these bloody men. That means how the conspirators have been able to convince the public. I will try and I will give an oration and see if I can convince them. I will want to see my the effect of my speech on them, on the common people. And after that only you will go to Rome, you will go back to Octavius and there tell him what has happened. Lend me your hand. So, help me to carry the body of Caesar. Lend me your ears means be attentive. Lend me your hand means help me. So, he wants the help of Octavius Caesar to carry the body of Octavius Caesar's servant to carry the body of Julius Caesar to the marketplace. So, this was a quite a lengthy scene and this is where it comes to an end. The second part also is equally lengthy as the first one and very important. The speeches of Mark Antony of course are very very important. So, yes this is where I bid you goodbye for the time being and have a happy night ahead.